Hi, this is Paul from Seven Sigma in Western Australia. Uh, this video I'm recording is about how to use Power Apps or how to create an activity feed from SharePoint inside Power Apps. The activity feed is derived from SharePoint Search and uh, I used it on a recent real world project which went really, really well because it was a great way to get people to come back to the app to see all the latest activity and all the latest um, information that was available on this portal. So the basic gist on how this is going to work is, or the way it was done, you can see I've got a little uh, mock-up diagram here. Uh, on the right you can see my Power App and this is the bit we're talking about, this little kind of activity feed here. Now, uh, the way that was done was I configured a SharePoint search result source. And that result source was configured to only look at certain SharePoint lists and libraries, which kind of makes sense because an activity feed is not about all activity on the portal. It might be only certain lists and libraries that you want to see. Um, a good example of this is where you might have configuration lists and configuration data, and you wouldn't really want to see uh, that stuff in an activity feed. So we have a SharePoint search result source. And the way I'm interrogating that search result source is I've created an Azure function and I'm using PNP PowerShell. Now don't worry too much if you haven't seen this stuff before, I will um, talk through it. It's pretty easy to set up and uh, work with. I'm then talking to that Azure function via a Power Apps custom connector. And so basically when Power Apps starts up, it makes a query to the Azure function via the custom connector. That queries the search result source and the data comes back and provides this feed. So that's the concept, and I'll take you through each of these bits. So firstly, we're gonna go into SharePoint, I'm gonna make a search result source, then we'll turn our attention to the PowerShell Azure function, and then the custom connector. So let's have a look at the result source. Okay, we are on a test site that I have with actually quite a lot of dummy data here. Uh, and uh, my daughter has written an app, and I'm gonna use some of her data um, here, because you might see there's a couple of lists here. There's, there's one called Cat Images. Um, there's actually a few um, cat-related um, lists in this site. Let me just quickly show you. We've got a, a document library full of photos of cats. We also have a cat directory and a cat image register. I'll show you more about these later, but the point is these are the three uh, pieces of content that I wish to put into a SharePoint result source. So what we'll do now is we'll go to Site Settings, and inside Site Settings, we're going to look for search result sources under Site Collection Administration. But I'm going to make a new result source, and this is where I get to specify um, certain content that is available. If I um, query the search engine and I say, just get content from this result source, it's like a filter of all of the content on the tenant. Now, um, my daughter's app is about cats, and it's about tracking cats all around the place. So in honor of her cat obsessiveness, she decided this was called a muse feed, not a news feed. So we're going to call this result source the Muse feed. And I'm going to come down here and I'm going to come into this Launch Query Builder. And this is where you get to be quite surgical on what content you want available in search results. So this Query Builder comes up and we then need to actually, you can see that just says, hey, whatever the user's typed in, that's the search term. But the thing about our result sources, they allow you to do other things. So for example, um, there are a whole bunch of built-in properties. So I could, for example, filter by author or filter by content type or file type and, and have a result source, for example, that only has a file extension of .doc um, if I wanted to show any Word documents. But actually the one I want to use here, I'm going to go show, show all managed properties because there is a, um, a, a property of SharePoint search called list ID. So I'm going to go down and find list ID. As you can see, there's a scary amount of things that you can use to do SharePoint search configuration. Now, the list ID is anything that contains, I'm going to put a value in here. So what value am I going to put in here? What's the deal? Well, if I was to go back to those three lists that I showed you earlier, each of them has a unique ID. Now, to get those IDs, I'm actually going to switch to PowerShell because we're going to be using PNP PowerShell anyway in a bit. So I might as well actually use PNP to get the list IDs and show you some of the versatility of this tool. So first up, I need to install the PowerShell module called SharePoint PNP PowerShell Online. So if I execute the install module commandlet running as an administrator, uh, I'll get prompted whether I want to um, install this module. And I'm going to say uh, yes to all. 
and off it'll go and actually install this module. Now this will take a few minutes, so I'm going to pause the video so that um, you don't have to wait for this, uh, this all to work. All right, now we've downloaded that module and let's actually uh, get set up so that we can connect to our online uh, store or our, connect to our tenant. Um, what I'm going to do to save time is actually use Credential Manager to Windows Credential Manager to store the password to my tenant. Um, under Credential Manager, under Windows Credentials, if you come down to Generic Credentials, you will see there that I have a um, entry that matches the name of my tenant. Now that's because I have actually just recently changed my password, so I'm going to come in here and put my password in. Right, that password has gone into Credential Manager. Now the reason I've done that is back in PowerShell, if I can connect to um, at my tenant using the connect PNP online um, commandlet, and as a parameter, it basically takes the name of my tenant. Um, because I've actually specified my credentials inside the credential manager, it's going to automatically use those credentials, so I don't have to get prompted for a password every time I connect in. That's a real time saver. So now that I've connected to PNP online, I'm going to use another of the PNP commandlets called get PNP list. And so this shows you all of the various lists and document libraries that happen to be on the site that I'm connected to. Now, you can see that as a, there's cat directory, there's the cat ones right there, and that I need these IDs. Okay, because there's quite a lot of lists and libraries there, let's just refine things a little bit. So I'll rerun that command get PNP list, but what I'll do now is I'll also add a where, there's a where command, where object, and I'm gonna go where title is like, I think it's like, like, and let's just go anything with cat in the name. And what do we come back with? Here we go. And there's the three I want. One, two, three, cat directory, cat image register, cat images. So let me grab this ID, copy it to the clipboard, and now I'm going to come back to this query builder. So if you recall, the property is list ID. So I want, if list ID contains that ID, I want it to be included in the query. So too, I also want to do it for cat image register. So now let's add cat image register there. And finally, I also want to do it for cat images. So we have now created a result source that says, I'll take whatever term the user put in, but I'm also filtering it by only content that matches these particular lists. So if I test that query, let's see what happens. If I click test, it will actually go off to search and it's come back and said, here are 72 results that match what you just put in here. Now, the thing is, if you look closely at these results, there is some stuff that I don't really want to see in a activity feed. For example, the allitems.aspx. This is kind of like the main list view um, page where you see all of your, like your master list. Now, what we're going to do here, rather than, we're going to exclude these, and the way we can exclude it is use another property filter. And that property filter is one called content class. So if I go back to content class, there it is there, content class. And if the content class is equal to STS list item generic list, now it's only going to show list items in here. So if I retest this query, we should see that result drop. And we've gone from 72 down to 30. And now it's starting to look more like what I want to see. I can see some photos of cats here, and I can see some names of cats here. So that's really cool. Well, actually, that's enough for that one. So let's go OK. And let's just come back up. It's called the Muse feed, and let's click Save. So there is task number one done. I now have a, a result source called Musefeed.